Hi, this is Chris again with Nightfall Audiobooks. This is The Secret Admirer. I got a request for this. I have not read it before. It is 4,900 lines long. Um, some of the books that I read are from text files, and I use Notepad++ to look at those files, and I can make adjustments and search for names and things like that. It tells me how long the book is. Like a 3,500 line book is pretty short, this should be around 200 pages or so. So I would expect, I don't know, two, two and a half hours maybe. So let's get started. If you want to get in touch with me, you can write me an email, nightfallaudiobooks at gmail.com. I am also on YouTube at Nightfall Audiobooks. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I love reading your comments. Tell me anything. Give me ideas on what to record next. Some of my favorite books that I have discovered with this series has been requests from listeners like The Secret Bedroom and The Rich Girl. Those were fantastic. So anyway, tell your mom, tell your friends, tell whoever you think would like to listen to me tell them tales from R.L. Stein. And let's begin. Welcome to a Nightfall Audiobooks production of The Secret Admirer by R.L. Stein, a Fear Street novel. Book 36 Prologue Dear Selina, your name means moon. Like the moon you are pale, beautiful, and mysterious. Your blonde hair is silvery like the moon's rays. Everyone admires you. Everyone applauds for you. I'm in your audience too, Selina. Though I see you every day, you don't see me. But some day that will change. Some day I will be the only person in your audience. It will be just you and me, Selina, someday, someday, very soon, yours forever, the sun. Chapter 1 He'll never hurt you again, I promise, he'll never hurt you again. Selina Goodrich's last words were almost a whisper. The audience began to clap. Slowly the curtain came down, closing off the stage. Then it rose again. Selina stepped to the front of the stage, smiling as she gazed out over the audience, accepting the cheers and applause. She bowed deeply, her blonde curls tumbling over her shoulders. Then she straightened and turned to the other actors in the cast. She joined hands with Allison Pearson and Jake Jacoby, and the line of actors, everyone in the play, bowed together. The audience leapt to its feet, cheering loudly. All of these people came to see me, Selina thought in wonder. I belong on the stage. Finally, I know where I fit in. The curtain sank for the final time. Selina turned to her friends. You were both terrific, she told them. Thanks, Selina, Allison murmured. Allison was pretty, with emerald eyes and long, straight-back hair. She smiled at Selina. But I'll never be as good as you. You were awesome. Hey, you weren't bad, Moon, Jake added, punching Selina lightly on the shoulder. Of all her friends, he was the only one who still called Selina by her childhood nickname. He loved to tease her, and he knew the nickname annoyed her. Most other people didn't even know that Selina meant moon. You weren't so bad yourself. At least you didn't fall on your face this time, Selina replied, rolling her eyes. Are you going to the cast party? Jake shrugged. I don't know, he said. I'm not really psyched for a party. Even through the stage makeup, Selina could see that Jake had dark circles under his eyes. She was about to ask him if anything was wrong when the drama club director swept between them. Congratulations, Selina, he boomed. Tonight's performance was excellent. I love that thing you did with the handkerchief in the last act. You surprised even me. Thank you, Mr. Riordan, Selina replied with a smile. The handsome, gray-haired teacher stepped onto a riser and shouted for attention. I'll see all of you at my house for the party, he called over the buzz of voices. But before we go, I want to remind you about tryouts next week for the spring play. You'll be happy to hear that we are doing a classic. Romeo and Juliet. This news was greeted with a mixture of groans and cheers. Romeo and Juliet, Selina thought with excitement. I'll get a chance to do Shakespeare on stage. She hurried to her locker, pushing through the loud, happy crowd of actors backstage. Yo, Selina, Danny Morris called. Good job. You were cool. Thanks, Selina replied curtly. She pushed past the stocky blonde senior. Catching the disappointment on his tanned face, she felt the tiniest pang of guilt. Maybe I should be nicer to Danny, she thought. After all, we meant something to each other. Once, a long time ago. 
These days, Selena couldn't figure out why all the girls at Shadeside High found Danny so fascinating. She still couldn't believe she'd gone out with him for as long as she did. How had she been able to stand his showing off and selfishness for six whole months? Trying out for the spring play, Danny demanded, stepping in front of her to block her path. Of course I am, Selena sighed. She tried to move around him, but he refused to budge. Danny, listen, I'm kind of in a hurry. You'll get to play Juliet for sure, Danny persisted, ignoring her attempts to get past. Guess which part I'm trying out for. The castle pest, Selena cracked. Selena. Selena turned at the familiar voice of her best friend, Katie Jensen. Katie came hurrying over in her stagehand's black coveralls. Later, she told Danny as Katie approached. You are excellent, Katie gushed. Even better than last night. She gave Selena a quick hug. Everyone hit it perfectly tonight, Selena told her friend. It's like it all finally came together, and everything backstage went perfectly. Katie wiped her forehead with the back of her hand. Her short, straight black hair stood on end. Her pale, round face shone with sweat in the dim backstage lights. I had a problem with the lights, she commented. Didn't you notice? Not at all, Selena replied. One of the spots became unfocused, Katie explained. I rushed up there as soon as I saw it. She pointed to the catwalk that stretched high above the stage. Selena glanced up and shuddered. How could anyone have the nerve to climb up there, she wondered. Just the sight of the narrow metal ladder built into the wall made her feel dizzy. But Katie never seems to mind heights. Even when they were little kids, she had been the one to climb trees while Selena cowered on the ground. I guess that's why Katie likes being on the stage crew, Selena thought absently. She pulled open the door of the big locker room. It was crowded with her friends from the play. While the play was in progress, this room doubled as a girl's dressing room. I don't know why we even bother with lockers, Katie commented. None of them lock anyway. Selena shrugged. So, are you ready for your next role? Katie asked. What do you mean? Selena demanded as she exchanged grins with Allison, who was also trying to push through the crowd of students. Come on, Katie laughed. You know you'll get Juliet. Everyone keeps saying that, Selena declared. But it's not like there's a guarantee I'll get the part. Katie snorted. Yeah, well, there's no guarantee the sun will rise tomorrow, but everyone knows you're perfect for Juliet. I mean, it's the last play of the year. No one will come if you aren't the star. Yeah, right. Selena rolled her eyes. Why did Katie always have to exaggerate everything? Anyway, it's up to Mr. Riordan, she added. What's up to me? Mr. Riordan approached the girls. We're talking about casting for the spring play, Selena told him. Mr. Riordan nodded. Casting for this next play might be particularly important, he confided. Why? Katie asked. Well, it's supposed to be a secret, but I just found out that the drama coach from Northwestern University will be here, Mr. Riordan whispered. You're kidding, Selena gasped. Northwestern had one of the best drama departments in the country. I'm serious, he told her. Each year he visits different schools in the area to check out the talent. This year he has chosen Shadyside High. Whoa, Selena cried. I'm applying to Northwestern. But there's no way I can go without a scholarship. Then this is your big chance, Mr. Riordan said with a wink. He turned and headed for the stage door. See you girls at the party. You never told me you wanted to go away to college, Katie remarked. Well, sure I want to, Selena replied. But it's only a dream. I mean, Mom doesn't even make enough money to send me to the junior college. If that drama coach sees you play Juliet, he'll give you the scholarship, Katie predicted. That would be amazing, Selena replied, but I'll believe it when I say it. Most of the other students had cleared out. Selena yanked open the door of her locker. Her backpack hung on the hook where she left it. But leaning against the pack, she saw something new, a large bouquet wrapped in blue striped paper. What is it? Katie asked, gazing over Selena's shoulder. Cool, Selena exclaimed. Someone left me flowers. I wonder who? Selena carefully pulled out the wrapped bouquet. She ripped the paper from the top and peered inside, and then she gasped in open-mouthed horror. Chapter 2 Selena dropped the bundle and stared down at it in shock. Both girls gaped as the black, dead roses tumbled onto the floor. How gross, Katie cried, pressing her hands against her cheeks. Yuck, dead flowers, Selena groaned. That's so sick. And then she noticed a small white envelope shoved under the rubber band holding the limp stems together. She bent down and snatched it up. With trembling fingers, 
Selina pulled a typed note from it and read, Dear Selina, congratulations. Enjoy your last curtain call. Did you know you were giving up the stage to be with me forever? Selina stood frozen, staring down at the black bouquet. Her disappointment quickly turned to anger. What a sick thing to do, she exclaimed. Katie held her nose against the foul odor of decay. Why would anyone do this? Selina scanned the note again. Look at this. She pointed to the bottom of the paper. There was no signature, only a bright orange sticker shaped like the sun. Selina scratched at it with her fingernail. What's that supposed to mean? Katie asked. Selina shrugged. It's just a sticker, the kind that little kids collect. But why is it on the note? Katie persisted. Who knows? Selina snapped. Who cares? Holding her breath, she picked up the ugly bouquet and dumped it in the trash can in the corner of the room. It's just a dumb joke. A joke, Katie cried. Are you crazy? What kind of person would think dead flowers are funny? Someone with a really warped sense of humor, Selena replied. Someone like Jake. Huh? Jake. He's been playing tricks on me ever since we were little. Maybe, Katie agreed. But this isn't his style. Besides, I don't think Jake is in the mood for jokes. Why not? Haven't you noticed? Katie replied. Jake's been so weird lately. Tonight, he went ballistic just because I asked him to hand me a prop. You know, he did look tired, Selena agreed. I wonder what's up with him. She thought about it as she followed her friend out to the parking lot. Katie's car was parked under a tall oak tree. I still think Jake sent the flowers, Selena announced as he approached the darkened car. I'll ask him about it later. Selena shivered as she waited for Katie to open the car door. It was a chilly, overcast night and the tree branches whipped in the wind as if they were dancing. I hope it was Jake, Katie said, pulling her keys from her jacket pocket, but that note sounds like it could be from someone really messed up. As Katie pulled out of the parking lot, Selena's thoughts were already racing with ideas about the spring play. She could imagine how she'd begin her audition, which scene she wanted to learn. Earth to Selena, Katie's voice interrupted her thoughts. Are you still with us? Huh? Selena blinked at her friend. Katie burst into laughter. Are you on another planet or what? She cried. You can't get change for the cast party if you don't get out of the car. Sorry, Selena murmured, surprised to find that they were already parked in front of her house on Fear Street. I was thinking about Romeo and Juliet. Katie rolled her eyes. We just finished with this play. Do you ever think of anything else? Well, occasionally I think about guys, Selena joked. She led the way up the crumbling sidewalk, opened the front door, and switched on the light. I wish my mom didn't have to work nights this month, she commented. I really wanted her to see the play. She'll be able to see you in the spring play, Katie said. If I get the part, Selena reminded her friend. She straightened the runner in the hallway, then started up the creaky steps. Everything around me is falling apart, Selena thought. She hated living in such a shabby house, but she knew it was all her mother could afford. Money was tight since Selena's father had died. There's no way anyone else could be Juliet, Katie insisted, following Selena into her bedroom. I mean, Allison is good, but she's not as good as you. Everyone says so. Allison is just being nice, Selena answered. She dumped her backpack on the pink and white bedspread. I'll help you learn your lines for the audition, Katie offered. Mm-hmm, Selena replied absently, but she already knew she didn't want help. She likes to learn lines by herself. Why don't you try out for one of the parts, she suggested. You don't always have to be a stagehand, you know. Katie snorted. What part could I get? I'm too big to get a decent role. Katie was about 20 pounds overweight and very self-conscious about it. Stop putting yourself down. Selena tried to keep the annoyance out of her voice. There are lots of parts in the play. Maybe you could be Juliet's nurse. Katie didn't respond. Selena dipped a tissue in a jar of cold cream and began removing her stage makeup. Selena, Katie said after a moment. When we were little, did you ever think you'd grow up to be so popular? Of course not, Selena replied. I thought I'd be fat and unpopular forever. Like me, Katie murmured. Selena ignored her. But once I got interested in drama, I stopped thinking about being popular. I just wanted to be a good actress. It happened so fast, Katie said. I mean, you took one drama class and that was it. You lost weight, you started going out with Danny, and you were the star of the very first play you did. Pure luck, Selena reminded her. The girl who had the lead had to leave school. I know, Katie agreed, but everyone knows you're the best actress at Shadyside High. You might be good enough for a professional career. 
Katie sank back against the pile of pillows on Selena's bed. She sighed. I hope you never get so popular. You aren't my friend anymore. Hey, no way, Selena cried. When I win the Academy Award, I'll get up there and say, I want to thank my best friend Katie Jensen, whose willingness to climb up on the catwalk made it all possible. They both laughed. Selena finished wiping her face, then opened the closet. She pulled out jeans and a green sweater. Are those jeans new? Katie asked. What are they? A size three? They're a seven, Selena replied, laughing. I'm not that skinny. Compared to how you used to be, you are, Katie replied. Compared to me, you are. You could lose weight, too, Selena pointed out. It's not like I'm a diet goddess or something. For sure, Katie scoffed. I'm serious, Selena insisted. I lost weight because I wanted to do drama. I knew I couldn't get lead parts unless I stopped eating so much. That's the difference between you and me, Katie said. I never cared about anything as much as you care about drama. Selena glanced at her friend in exasperation. Well, find something to care about, she said. She pulled her hair back and tied it with a green hair scrunchie. How do I look, she asked. Awesome, Katie replied. She glanced at her watch. We'd better get going. We don't want to get there too early, Selena said. We... She stopped when she heard the tapping at the bedroom window. A soft tapping. Then louder. A thump. She spun around. Her eyes bulged with terror. Katie, she choked out. Someone's at the window. Someone's watching us. Chapter 3 Selena caught the fear on Katie's face as they both turned to the window and heard a clattering crash. You're right, Katie cried. There's someone outside. Ignoring her pounding heart, Selena hurtled to the window. She peered out into solid blackness. What is it? Who is it? Katie said in a voice just above a whisper. No one's there, Selena reported, staring down at the small patch of lawn at the side of the house. I, I think I just panicked. I mean, we're on the second floor, right? How could anyone? But what was that crash? Katie demanded, her arms crushed over her chest. She hadn't moved from the center of the room. It's really windy. Maybe the wind blew something over, Selena told her. Selena shuddered. The thought of someone peering through her window while she changed was creepy. But it couldn't be true. There's no way anyone could see in, she reassured Katie. We're too high up. I guess, Katie murmured, eyes still on the window. Let's just go to the party. Selena grabbed her bag and skipped down the wooden stairs. Katie followed close behind. Selena pulled open the front door. The wind had picked up. It fluttered her blonde curls as she locked the door. It was the wind, Katie cried. Look! Selena glanced in the direction her friend was pointing. In the side yard, a long metal ladder lay on the ground below Selena's bedroom window. It must have blown over, Katie said. But what was a ladder doing there in the first place? Selena asked. Right under your window, Katie murmured. Selena stared at the... Selena stared at the ladder in disbelief. Could someone truly have been watching her get dressed? She gazed up at her window and felt a chill run down her back. This is kind of creepy, Katie whispered. First, someone sends dead roses and that frightening card. Then, she swallowed hard. Do you think someone is following you? Stalking you? Stalking me? Don't get crazy, Katie, she scolded. She stared at the fallen ladder. It was very windy, and there were no people or cars on the street. If someone had been looking through her window, he would have fallen with the ladder, and she would have heard a car driving away. There's got to be some other explanation, Selena decided. Maybe my mom was fixing something on the house, and she forgot to put the ladder away. Maybe, Katie replied, but I doubt it. Help me put it in the garage, Selena said. She leaned down and picked up one end of the ladder. Katie reached for the other end, then stopped. Oh, wow, she cried. What is it? Katie pointed. On the bottom rung. Selena squinted at the ladder and spotted a small orange circle on the bottom rung. A sticker of the sun. Chapter 4 I still say it's some kind of joke, Selena declared as Katie drove toward North Hills. Katie snorted. Then it's a sick joke. I mean, dead flowers? And climbing a ladder to spy on you? We don't know for sure that anyone was on that ladder, Selena reminded her. Well, what about those sun stickers? Katie persisted. What kind of sick joke is that? Selena didn't answer. She stared out the car window at the large black trees along Old Mill Road. 
She couldn't wait to get to Mr. Riordan's house. At the party, she could stop thinking about stickers and flowers and ladders. She would concentrate on having fun. But Katie refused to drop the subject. She seemed really frightened. Maybe some psycho saw you in the play. Maybe you are being stalked. Selena stared out the window and didn't reply. I read an article about how crazy people stalk actors and rock stars, Katie continued, turning onto Park Drive. They follow them everywhere, watching everything they do. Selena laughed. Great theory, Katie, but I'm not famous. You're famous in Shadyside, Katie argued. You're the star actress at the high school. Selena shrugged. It still doesn't make sense. Why would anyone be that interested in stalking a high school senior? It could be someone at school, Katie replied earnestly. Some guy who likes you or hates you or something. Selena shrugged again. Stalkers aren't like normal people, Katie continued. They can be really dangerous. Sometimes they kill the people they're stalking. This guy is only leaving me stickers, Selena exclaimed. Besides, if it is somebody at school, then it means I know him. It's probably someone who I know. Who? Danny Morris, Selena suggested. Danny, Katie scoffed. Why would Danny stalk you? He's not stalking me, Selena sighed, rolling her eyes. He wants me to get back together with him. No way, Katie exclaimed. You broke up over a year ago. I know, Selena replied, but he's always bothering me. It's like he can't just believe I don't want him back. I wish he would leave me alone. Well, I'd take him off your hands if I could get him to look at me, Katie joked. Selena frowned. Why are you always putting yourself down? You know it's true, Katie replied. He'd never want someone like me. He likes sexy, skinny girls. Like you. Selena shrugged and glanced at her watch. The party should be going full blast by the time we get there, she commented. Yeah, Katie answered absently. I heard. Her voice trailed off. You heard what? Katie didn't answer. Selena saw her staring into the rearview mirror. Without warning, Katie made a sharp right turn. Katie? Selena cried over the squealing tires. What's wrong? Mr. Riordan's house is in the other direction. I know, her friend replied, but someone's following us. Huh? Selena twisted in her seat and saw bright headlights in the back window. Katie made another sharp right. The lights faded, then swung back into the car window. He, he's staying right on our tail, Katie cried. It must be your stalker, Selena. He's trying to push us off the road. Chapter 5 Selena braced her hands against the dashboard as Katie swerved around another corner. Their tires squealed. The car skidded onto the curb, then bounced back onto the street. Katie, look out, Selena cried. He's still behind us, Katie responded, her voice shaking. He's practically riding our back bumper. What should we do? Calm down, Selena instructed her. It's just some joker. Stop talking about stalkers. Turn back to North Hills. He'll speed away as soon as we stop at the party. Are you crazy? Katie cried, both hands squeezing the wheel. If he follows us to Mr. Riordan's house. He'll speed away, Selena repeated. He wouldn't dare follow us into the house. We'll be safe there. But do you have a better idea? No, Katie admitted. You're right. She turned left at the next light and sped toward North Hills. Every time she switched lanes, the car behind them also switched. When she sped up or slowed down, the other car matched her speed, staying on their back bumper. As soon as we get to Mr. Riordan's, I'm calling the police, Katie declared. At last, they pulled into the big circular driveway in front of Mr. Riordan's house. The other car squealed to a stop behind them. What now? Katie cried. She set the parking brake and turned to gaze out the rear window. I'm not getting out while he's there. I, I don't know what we should do, Selena stammered. Maybe you should honk. Katie squinted into the rearview mirror, her features tight with fear. Selena caught a flash of terror in her friend's eyes. Oh no, Katie choked out. He's getting out of his car. He's walking toward us. We're trapped.